equipment like uh, in this case uh, to Sabri and later on Limtrata. Uh, could that cause any problems or disadvantage with stem cell transplantation uh, yeah. later on? So I don't like Limtrata. Uh, it's a personal bias. I could be wrong. Um, People will get upset at me for saying this, but I view Lemtrata as uh, liquid HIV because it knocks your immune system down and doesn't recover. So when we do a transplant, your immune system goes down, but when we analyze it, it recovers. You, all your CD4, CD8, immune cell subsets all recover. With uh, Lemtrata, they go down, they don't recover. And you get all these really weird, autoimmune disorders, very high incidence of ITP with Lemtrata, even five years out. So much, much higher than what we see with our treatment. And so you have to get a CBC every month for five years, a blood draw to check your platelets. But the problem with that ITP is one week it can be normal, and next week it can drop suddenly. So you, know, you can't have your platelets checked every week. So it's almost a false assurance. There's a, a lot of other autoimmune disorders associated with Lemtrata. But more people are being treated with it, and um, the question is, what do we do if someone's had Lemtrata? Should we do a, a stem cell transplant? My initial bias is no, but then you know, people are pressuring us to do this, and so we're thinking, well, what kind of time window do we need to be off, not exposed to that drug before we do this, where we can do it safely? And uh, for, you know, like Jelani and Tecfidera, three months seems adequate. For Tysabri, we want that six-month window. Um, you know, interferons or Copaxone, there's no window. You can go take them right up to the day we admit you. But Lemtrada, we really don't know. And, you know, my bias would be to wait two years, but I don't think people are going to accept that. So we're thinking, can we do it in 12 months that you haven't been exposed to it and do this procedure? Um, but I'm worried, you know, if you look at the lymphocytes in those patients, they're still like an AIDS patient. That's what, you know, they don't have AIDS and they're not getting these opportunistic infection, but their lymphocytes are like that. And so that's why I call it liquid HIV. And I'm worried that if we do the transplant, those lymphocytes are not going to recover like they would in our other patients. And, you know, so this is an unknown. We don't know yet. And uh, with time, I'm sure will be pushed to doing some of these patients who've had Lemtrata. We'll, need, uh, we'll mandate at least a one-year break off it before we do it, and then we'll just have to look at immune reconstitution afterwards or see, or see if anything different happens in terms of, like, much higher risk of ITP or, you know, patients with uh, getting Lemtrata has also got good pasture disease and other immune-mediated disorders, and, you know, I don't know. Or my worries may be unfounded. But, uh, you know, these are the thoughts that I have and have to second guess and will probably cautiously move forward in treating people who've had Lemtrana with at least a year break off of it. Just have one more question here. Um, can you explain again why you have the inclusion criteria? So, so that you need to have one attack on the medicine or changes in the lesions? Inclusion criteria. We're looking for inflammatory disease. So if, if on Copaxone or interference, you have at least two real acute attacks needing steroids over the last year, at least one hopefully documented with enhancement on MRI, we would take you to this procedure. Or if you're on a second line drug, you know, like Jeleni or Tysabri and you have an attack clear attack needing steroids or enhancement in MRI, then we would offer this procedure. Okay, and what's the reason for that? Because, I mean, you, earlier you said that the medicine only slows down to process. It's all risk-benefit. There is, I have to emphasize, a very small if you do it right, but never zero risk of dying from a transplant. 